Let's build this challenging all resin model with advanced modeling techniques. Come on guys, I was kidding, this is Skeleton. As always, I will show you how to build this model the easy way with simple materials and alternative solutions. So, let's get started. And here is the brand new USCP BMB E39M5 kit. Let's take a closer look at the parts that come with the kit. The car body and chassis are molded as one piece. All columns and window spaces are protected against the formation. The accuracy and quality of the details looks truly incredible as it is molded and produced in 3D with reference from the real car. The only downside is that it takes some time to cut the thick wedges used to prevent deformation. Other than that, it's a real well designed model. In addition, the parts that come with the kit which cannot be resin molded are also 3D printed. Cleaning them will be easier than the other. Two different sets of rims and a set of tires come with the kit. While the clear parts looking challenging, they've been the most problem free clear car parts I've ever dealt with. Let's cut the resin parts. I'm gonna show you a few ways of it. The first way is to cut the resin parts in water to avoid dust. Resin dust is carcinogenic. You can cut thick pieces that you are sure will not damage while cutting with a side cutter. Be careful. There are only two of these in the kit. Saws of various forms and sizes will make easy the cutting work. The second way is the fastest, using a motor tool. This method is the one that most dust. Since resin dust is carcinogenic, I instantly remove dust with a powerful vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner I use has a high quality HEPA filter. Otherwise the dust will spread more all over the room and you will make the situation worse. Thus, I have show all the tools and methods I use when cutting and cleaning resin parts. Bubbles formed in a few places on the car body of this copy. Now I will show you how to fix this with CA glue and baking soda easily. let them dry for a few hours. In the meantime, let's clean up the 3D parts.
First, I scrape off the excess with a proper blade. Then I level it with sandpaper and complete the process. The only adhesive I can rely on when fixing very large resin parts, this is two component epoxy. A gap formed between the rear bumper and the car body. I couldn't fix this with level ink and gonna fix it by filling with same epoxy. I mask the surface first so that the epoxy doesn't get around. Okay. Now I leave this to dry for a few hours. After it's completely dry, I start the scraping of the excess with a blade. After leveling and redrawing the detail lines, the problem solved. I washed all the resin parts in warm water with this soap. Because the surface of all casting resin parts is oil coated. Before applying the primer, I cut the PE parts that I need to add, clean and fix them in place. I'm preparing all parts for the primer. This time I will apply two different primers to the model. The first one is this primer with microfiller feature.
I'm starting to paint the interior parts. My goal here is to capture a realistic leather and plastic look. These are the paints I used for this. I'm applying a second coat of primer to the car body and the chassis. It's important that the primer is black, because this special paint regains its true color only when applied on a black surface. I applied a thick paint layer. After it has dried, now I'm sanding the surface to make it smooth. Now I'm painting the car body with the new mixture, which is more thinner than the first one. This makes the surface much smoother. The next day I applied glossy varnish to the model. While the varnish dries, let's paint the interior. I apply wood effect with acrylic paints. I also paint the black details with a brush. I apply X22 on surfaces that should be glossy. The decals are pretty good quality and I haven't had any problems with them. Here is a trick from an aircraft modeler. I apply a light wash to the seats with acrylic ink and wipe with water before it dries out too much.
glass surface effect. I couldn't remove the oil on this and fell off this way instead of paint for the fabric surface effect. This is a plaster, it's an adhesive bandage. I'm hoping to get a realistic fabric surface effect with this. I think it turned out pretty well. Be careful with these parts, they are quite fragile. That's why they each have three backups in the kit. And here are the most beautiful details of this kit, the seat belts. For this, PE buckles and a black ribbon come with the kit. I liked it. The varnish I applied as a very thick layer has dried well and I sand it to make it smooth. After washing the model, I apply a second coat of varnish. Almost all of this mixture consists of thinner. I just added a few drops of varnish. While the varnish dries, let's paint the metallic parts. I apply coarse, fine and finished compounds respectively. Now comes the most stressful job. You know, masking resin surfaces is not a good idea. Masks can remove the paint at any time. 
For this reason, I used masking tapes on a clean surface a few times and then reduced their adhesion ability. And I did not have a problem with the masks. I apply the first coat of wax and now start gluing the parts to the car body. As I mentioned earlier, the clear parts are great. They are perfectly crystal clear. These were the parts that I was most afraid of, but since they designed perfectly, they fit into place without any problems. I glued all the glasses in place without a single problem. There's only one thing I can suggest for this. A mask template or a pre-cut mask set would be nice to paint from the inside to black. Let's complete the chassis assembly.
At this stage, it's necessary to combine the chassis and car body. So now let's glue the interior details in place. And here are the interior details. Yes, you see right, it's a screw and a screwdriver. Because this model weights approximately 250 grams. A plastic car model weights about 1000 grams. One last tip, I stick a tape to the PE parts that are likely to get lost while cutting so that this doesn't get lost while cutting. I file the surface a bit for better adhesion. This is the most realistic car model I've ever built. This is because it's modeled from a real car and produced directly by 3D printing. When it's finished, it looks like a shrinked real car on the table. USCP has produced a very impressive model. I'm very happy with the result. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the pictures. Bye.